role that you cover the, the White House. Uh, the president has had several of these joint news conferences yes. with visiting foreign leaders, yes. usually two questions from American mm -hmm. journalists, two questions from the, uh, the country that's uh, visiting yes. the United States. Uh, it's been more than a year that he's had a full-scale formal formal news conference where the president stands there, spends an hour or so answering Over reporters' year, yeah. questions. Hold that thought. Mm -hmm. Here's the president of the United States. Thank you. Today I'm honored to host the president of Estonia, the president of Latvia, and the president of Lithuania at the U.S. Baltic Centennial Summit. Thank you all for traveling to the White House for these really important discussions. We've just spent a long time together, and it was very interesting. This summit proudly displays to the world America's deep and lasting friendship with the Baltic nations. On behalf of the American people, thank you very much. And we are going to have another 100-year very long and beautiful relationship. This is your 100th year of independence. Congratulations. For a century, the United States has stood with the people of the Baltics in support of their independence, sovereignty, and self-determination. Through the decades of brutal Soviet occupation, the United States never ceased to recognize the sovereignty of the Baltic republics. In our discussions today, I was proud to reaffirm America's commitment to the Wells Declaration of 1940 and the U.S. Baltic Charter of 1998. These same principles lie at the heart of America's approach to world affairs, honoring the right of peaceful citizens and nations to protect their interests and chart their own wonderful destinies. All three Baltic republics are committed NATO allies. I want to express our gratitude to each of your countries for fulfilling your full obligations and meeting the 2 percent GDP benchmark for national defense this year. Your commitment to burden sharing is an example of, really, that other NATO nations and partners all around the world will have to all get together and bear. Some of them do not make the same commitment. Hopefully, they soon will. When nations are committed to peace and to security, they have to pay their share, and we will all enjoy a much more safe and prosperous future. Baltic countries are also providing security assistance and training as part of the coalition to defeat ISIS. The coalition has liberated almost 100 percent of the territory once held by ISIS in Syria and in Iraq, and we will not rest until ISIS is gone. In economic matters, our cooperation can, continues to develop and grow, as you well know. We're excited about several new opportunities for collaboration, especially in science, medicine, and technology. Immediately following this summit, the Department of Commerce and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce will host a U.S. Baltic Business Summit to expand mutual trade and investment between our nations. And they're all looking forward to seeing you. The Baltic countries remain a key market for U.S. aircraft, automobiles, machinery, and medical equipment, and we welcome increased bilateral trade with all three nations based on the principle of fairness and reciprocity. Finally, we are enhancing our cooperation on energy security. We're all collaborating to diversify energy sources, supplies, and routes throughout the Baltic region, including expanding exports of U.S. liquefied natural gas, of which you've become a bigger and bigger user. These are just some of the many wonderful opportunities we can seize together. To all three Baltic leaders with us today, thank you again for helping to celebrate. And this is really a very great celebration because it's a historic milestone. Our friendship will continue to grow closer, and our cooperation will continue to bring about the greater security and prosperity for our citizens. And you have done terrific jobs as leaders, as presidents of your countries. And we tell you that, for your citizens, we are there for you. As we begin the next 100 years of our partnership, 
the Baltic republics can trust the United States will remain a strong, proud, and loyal friend and ally. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Uh, probably it's my turn. Yes, uh, whatever you like. It looks so. Ladies first. <laughs> Uh, so, of course, we're very thankful for the possibility to be here, especially not only because of our anniversary in our region, but uh, because of alliance uh, which we are affirming today with the United States by uh, adopting the declaration where we say that Article 5 uh, is ironic, ironclad uh, for all of us and uh, the collective defense issues are important to all of us and we understand how important NATO is for all of us and why we, during our discussions talked so much about uh, the reforming, further reforming NATO, uh, the investments into our defense, the amounts of uh, necess necessary to invest into our defense, and of course, together uh, where it is necessary, all of us, and Lithuania is with the United States, on fighting the terrorists through all the world. We back in Afghanistan, we in Mali, we in Central African Republic, we in Kosovo, we, we in Ukraine together. So we are partners, allies, and trustful allies. And uh, because of that, we are sure that the reforms of NATO, which we are investing together and preparing together, uh, will be resultative, as it was before, but especially now, because we're seeing uh, United States leadership, we're seeing the willingness of United States to see different NATO, different quality of NATO, and I can be probably open. We talked with the president. I was joke a little bit, joking about that we need leadership sometimes for decision-making, even unpredictable leadership, to make enough leverage and pressure for the rivals to believe that we can make a decision. And that's, we seeing this kind of leadership in President Trump. And this is good because uh, without the leverage and pressure, there will be no additional spendings uh, in our defense, in NATO. There will be no additional uh, decisions for rotating uh, military forces uh, of United States in our countries. There will be uh, no uh, willingness to look into the matter of air defense, which we need very much. So from all this uh, point of view, uh, we trust that our partner, and ally uh, is uh, investing seriously in the future of our defense, not only our regions, but the NATO's territory defense and in the peace and security of the world as it was before. Of course, uh, the businesses are coming together. Ally in military cooperation in goes with economic cooperation. And I am very happy that today in our business forum, uh, we will sign two agreements with two American companies on the, on the liquid gas cooperation. Lithuania has liquid uh, gas uh, station uh, and factory. Uh, so-called uh, uh, floating boat, uh, uh, but uh, we can uh, be independent, all three Baltic states, uh, on the gas supply because of that, and this gives us strength and uh, uh, possibility to make our own decisions, uh, not to depend on one supplier, and American liquid gas will come on time uh, and will uh, make us uh, more independent in our decision making and diversifies our uh, gas supply. And this is about a real friendship, about a real uh, cooperation between our region and United States. And this comes also together with the trade matters where today we see some discussions on the world uh, level between uh, United States and European Union. We are uh, together with the decisions that the trade needs to be uh, useful and equally fair to all sides. There is no sense to go to the war, but decisions, if there is disbalances, need to be fined. And this uh, we will support uh, as uh, ally of United States. So, together with international obligations uh, in military, together with the uh, uh, cooperation in economy, together with the uh, uh, with the United States and European Union in solving the uh, trade disputes and issues, we are standing with and together. And we hope that, as President said, next hundred years will be even better, closer together, and we will be able to achieve and make more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Uh, Your Excellency President Trump, uh, my esteemed uh, Baltic colleagues, uh, dear friends, uh, the Baltic-US President's summits uh, reaffirmed our shared uh, 
commitment to fundamental values, our long-lasting friendship and the steadfast partnership that we have enjoyed for nearly a century. The United States of America is our closest friend and ally. I appreciate that we have each other's mutual support in our endeavors as well as uh, in the security challenges we are facing. Today, we reflected uh, on our many achievements and set a course for our future uh, undertakings. We have agreed to enhance our defense and security cooperation. The Baltic states appreciate the United States commitment to deterrence policy in the Baltic region and the military assistance provided to our forces. Uh, we will continue to commit 2% uh, of GDP towards uh, the development of our military capabilities for the purposes of both strengthening NATO's posture in the eastern flank and uh, Baltic states and the United States uh, acknowledged uh, the need to continue the successful existing cooperation we have in countering modern day security threats such as terrorism, cyber and uh, informational warfare and nuclear proliferation. Today, all of us uh, committed to placing greater emphasis on advancing our economic and trade and investment relationship. We recognize great potential in areas of innovation, modern technologies and the digital economy. Uh, and we will explore possibilities for forging new partnerships uh, to this end. Uh, I am particularly proud of successes of Latvian companies that have generated uh, more than 2,000 jobs in the US, in Georgia, in North Carolina, in uh, California. It's, uh, it just shows how important is this economic cooper cooperation. And uh, finally, the Baltic States and uh, the United States uh, agreed to continue promoting closer people-to-people -people, uh, contacts uh, because uh, these contacts are very important for every member of our society. Uh, and uh, let me uh, stress uh, that President Trump uh, was an outstanding host today. Thanks for hosting us uh, in this, for us in this very important uh, event uh, when we celebrate 100 years anniversary of our statehood. Thanks. Thank you President Trump, my dear neighbors, dear journalists, I would like to thank President Trump and his administration for his political leadership in our region and for the very visible commitment which has been demonstrated through a number of high-level visits also to our region. This year we do celebrate indeed our centennial anniversary. Of these hundred years, for 50, we were occupied by the Soviet Union and people in our country got up every morning knowing that there are democratic countries led by United States who have never recognized the occupation of the Baltic states. Our national flag, the blue, black and white, was waving here in America throughout these years. It couldn't have been done at that time in Estonia. It was heartwarming. It was true sign of friendship. We knew it back then and we remember it and we are still grateful for it. We'll be forever. Today, we agreed a declaration also reminding us about the foundations of our relations. My friends here spoke a lot about what we do. It's always worth to remind why we do this. We believe that peace, security and prosperity depend on strong sovereign nations that respect their citizens at home and cooperate to promote peace abroad. Our partnership 
is based on principles of democracy and individual liberty and the rule of law. These things are extremely important. Today, we stand together, like-minded partners and allies. Yes, Baltic states are quite small, but they are important because of their location. But not only because of what we do as contributing partners to the global security. We find it very important to contribute in the counter-terrorism fight. We find it important since 2011 to spend 2% of our GDP on defence. We find it extremely important to remember that we stand together and we form something which we call in my office an axis of good. This is an axis of good made visible for you all. Yes, Estonia and the United States are very different by the size of their economy. But when we are speaking about digital economies, then this doesn't matter anymore. Estonia is a, one of the world's leading nations of digital governance. And our companies are working with companies in your country to make sure that people elsewhere could benefit. This cannot come without cybersecurity. There is a NATO center of excellence on cybersecurity in Estonia because we have been attacked on cyber long before anybody else. We still work together, we contribute, and we hope that we are really helpful to all of our partners. Yes, we have also more conventional trade, which we do together. People in Walmart going for their pre-ordered packages in a couple of years will see them delivered by Estonian-made package delivery robots. We are proud of this, and we are also proud of our legal environment in Estonia, which invites business to try and test new ideas in our place, which is tiny, and then upscale when it makes more sense to upscale. This way, we work together, both on defense matters, economic matters, and always stand on our common value base. This is the foundation of our relations. Thank you for today for making this visible, this axis of good. Thank you very much, thank you very much. We'll take a few questions. Uh, we're going to also have questions specifically for the Baltics. Uh, Steve? Reuters. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, some of your military advisors are urging you to keep a contingent of U.S. troops in Syria to ensure the defeat of ISIS. What is your current thinking on this subject? Do you still want them out? And secondly, could you clarify what you meant about having the U.S. military guard the U.S. border along with Mexico? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, the, first of all, the border. Uh, the Mexican border is very unprotected by our laws. We have horrible, horrible and very unsafe laws in the United States, and we're going to be able to uh, do something about that hopefully soon. Hopefully Congress will get their act together and get in and create some very powerful laws like Mexico has and like Canada has and like almost all countries have. We don't have laws. We have catch and release. You catch and then you immediately release, and people come back years later for a court case, except they virtually never come back. So uh, we are preparing for the military to secure our border between Mexico and the United States. Uh, we have a meeting on it in a little while with General Mattis and everybody, and uh, I think that it's something we have to do. Now, the caravan, which is uh, over a 1,000 people, coming in from Honduras, thought they were going to just walk right through Mexico and right through the border. As you know, uh, NAFTA is a phenomenal deal for Mexico. It's been a horrible deal for the United States. We're renegotiating it now. But it has been a horrible, horrible, embarrassing deal for the United States. This should have been terminated or renegotiated many years ago. Uh, Mexico, we have a trade deficit with Mexico of over $100 billion a year. And I told Mexico, yesterday that because of the fact that their laws are so strong, they can do things about it that hard to believe the United States can't. I said, I hope you're going to tell that caravan not to get up to the border. And I think they're doing that because as of 12 minutes ago, it was all being broken up. We'll see what happens. But we have to have strong borders. We need the wall. We've started building the wall. As you know, we have a billion six toward building the wall and fixing existing wall that's falling down or was never appropriate in the first place. And that's very important. As far as Syria is concerned, uh, our primary mission in terms of uh, that was getting rid of ISIS. We've almost completed that task, and we'll be making a decision very quickly in coordination with others in the area uh, as to what we'll do. Saudi Arabia uh, is uh, very interested in our decision. 
And I said, well, you know, you want us to say maybe you're going to have to pay. But uh, a lot of people, you know, we do a lot of things in this country. We do them for we, — we do them for a lot of reasons. But it's very costly for our country, and it helps other countries a hell of a lot more than it helps us. So we're going to be making a decision. We've had a tremendous military success against ISIS, as you know. It's close to 100 percent, as I just said. And we'll be making a decision as to what we do uh, in the very near future. We'll be consulting also with groups of our people and groups of our allies. Okay? So you're inclined to pull the troops out? Say it. You're, you're inclined to pull the troops out? I want to get out. I want to bring our troops back home. I want to start rebuilding our nation. We will have, as of three months ago, $7 trillion in the Middle East over the last 17 years. We get nothing, nothing out of it, nothing. And as you remember, in civilian life for years, I said, keep the oil. I was always saying, keep the oil. We didn't keep the oil. Who got the oil was ISIS got the oil, a lot of it. That's what funded their campaigns. They took a lot of the oil, and it was largely responsible for funding. We should have kept the oil then. We didn't keep the oil. So I want to get back. I want to rebuild our nation. Think of it. Seven trillion dollars over a 17-year period. We have nothing, nothing except death and destruction. It's a horrible thing. So uh, it's time. It's time. We were very successful against ISIS. We'll be successful against anybody militarily. But sometimes it's uh, time to come back home. And we're thinking about that very seriously. Okay? Thank you. Lithuanian. Lithuanian television. Uh, Mr. President, not, not about getting out, but getting in. Uh, the, the joint declaration mentions uh, the periodic American deployments in the Baltic countries. What specifically can you commit to having heard the requests and wishes of the Baltic uh, states? And, uh, President, you have mentioned uh, Russia as a terrorist state. Did you have a meeting of minds here as to the threat that Russia poses uh, to the neighboring countries? Thank you. Well, we have a very strong relationship, as the presidents will tell you, with the Baltic states. And we are with them. We're friends and we're allies. And uh, we are going to have a long-term, very fine relationship. In addition, we do business on trade. We work very hard on security together. Uh, surprisingly, uh, large numbers of trade. These are very industrious nations. Now, you're from there, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. These are ter tremendous people and very, very industrious. We do a lot of business on trade. Thank you. Thank you very much. The second part of your question, of course, uh, interesting, uh, especially because we didn't talk uh, in that uh, uh, words uh, about uh, the rival, uh, especially on our border, but then country behaves aggressively, uh, performs wars, uh, uh, threatens with nuclear missiles on your border. Of course, you sometimes call this country not very friendful. That's uh, why we investing into our defense, we investing into our security, we investing into reforming NATO, and we would like to see strong NATO, strong alliance, and that's what we are going to do together. Thank you. Would you like to choose somebody, the President? Your turn. Your turn. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Trump, uh, speaking about economy, about economic uh, cooperation uh, with my country, with Latvia, what is your uh, message for investors in Latvia? And uh, what is, uh, what is um, your opinion about the investment in Latvia? I think all Thank three you. would be great places to invest. Uh, stable governments, incredible people, hardworking, industrious people. Uh, I think they would be great places to invest. I would have no problem with it, although I think as uh, President of the United States, they would call it a slight conflict of interest, perhaps. You might be hearing from these people. No, I think it would be a, a great place. I think all three would be a great place to invest. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Maria. Maria Androhama, Estonian Public Broadcasting. First, a question to President Trump. Uh, as said, the concern of the Baltic states is Russia. And before the press conference, uh, you also said that 
at the same time, good relationship with Russia is not bad. But how are you going to deal with uh, President Vladimir Putin? Um, is he as your enemy or someone you can have dialogue with? And the second question is to our pre president, Kersti Kaljulaid. Um, is the defense of the Baltic states enough or should there be something more? For example, air defense systems. Thank you. Well, I think we'll be able to have great dialogue, I hope. And if we can't, you'll be the first to know about it. Nobody's been tougher on Russia than I have. And you can — and I know you're nodding yes, because everyone agrees when they think about it. Strong energy, the United States. My opponent was into other forms of energy, like windmills. Uh, we're uh, — we're very strong on energy. We're essentially now energy independent. We're an exporter of energy. That is not a positive for Russia, but it's certainly a positive for the United States. We just passed a $700 billion military budget. Next year, $716 billion, the largest ever passed. We are going to have a military stronger than we've ever had before, by far. Uh, that's not exactly a great thing for Russia, but that's the way it is. We're going to have the strongest military that we ever had. Uh, NATO. NATO was delinquent. They were not paying their bills. They were not paying a lot of states, as we discussed. Uh, they were not uh, — they were not paying what they should be paying. Since I came in, many, many billions of dollars additional have been paid by countries that weren't paying, and now they're paying. And uh, they will have to pay more, frankly. They're going to have to pay more. So there are many things uh, that uh, I've done, and not only the 60 diplomats. Uh, Germany did four. France did four. We did 60. There's nobody been tougher on Russia. And with that being said, I think I could have a very good relationship with President Putin. I think. It's possible I won't. And you will know about it. Believe me, this room will know about it before I know about it. It's a real possibility that I could have a good relationship. And remember this. Getting along with Russia is a good thing. Getting along with China is a good thing. Getting along with other countries, including your three countries, is a good thing, not a bad thing. So I think I could have a very good relationship with Russia and with President Putin. And if I did, that would be a great thing. And there's also a great possibility that that won't happen. Who knows? Okay? Thank you. Okay. If I may, Marianne, if, uh, I would also like to contribute a little bit to your first question. As I reminded you all, we could trust the judgment of United States administrations and people even while we were occupied. We could trust your judgment when we regained independence and seek membership of NATO, for example. We could, because we are on a common foundation. You can walk around the mall and read. It's all written there. This foundation, our compass for both. And therefore, I trust the judgment of President Trump and his administration on that matter, too. Now, on your concrete question on, uh, on air defense, yes, we did discuss the uh, deterrence capacity necessary to make sure that our deterrence is believable to everybody who might want to question it. But you know, equal partners don't come to talk to each other this way, that I come here to Washington to ask for visa freedom, or I come here to ask for, let's say, may you support me for this or for that. We analyze situation together, and we find the solutions together, which will work for us all together, because we are in it all together. We are contributors, equal contributors, according to our size, to this process of guaranteeing our security. Thank you. Okay. Maybe I will add uh, that today, during uh, our summit, we discuss uh, security issues in our region uh, with President Trump. And uh, I am sure that uh, this discussion will help a lot uh, to continue any political dialogue uh, with our eastern neighbor, Russia. Uh Pick a reporter, please. You could pick a reporter, a Baltic reporter, ideally. <laughs> Real news, not fake news. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Do you want to pick? I think we have enough. Do we have enough? Yes? Yeah. Go ahead. Pick, Mr. President, pick a reporter from the Baltics. Not the same man. He was very tough. Go ahead. Pick a reporter. I see it. Okay, I can. Uh, I yes, can. go ahead. Yes, please. Go ahead. 
Hi, my name is Anna Ode. I'm from uh, Latvia. So I have a question for uh, our president from Latvia. You're going to San Francisco after uh, your meeting here in Washington, and you're meeting some uh, people who are uh, making business connections from Latvia and the U.S. Do you see any, any certain outcomes out, out of that? Thank you. First of all, I think during our summit, I will repeat again that we discussed how we can strengthen our economic cooperation between Baltic states and the U.S. Uh, and of course, my visit to California, to Silicon Valley, uh, will give, I think, good basis for, for a better understanding uh, what our business people need to be presented uh, here, and what I can help, how I can help uh, them uh, to be here. Because anyway, I think uh, all these cooperations uh, between Baltic states business people and U.S. business people is very important for our societies, for our business societies. Uh, and as I said, uh, we are thinking not only about investments in our country, and we are trying uh, to make a better environment for investments uh, in our uh, country, but also our business people are invest invested uh, he here. And uh, I think it is important for both countries, for Latvia and for, your, for the U.S. I just want to conclude by saying that I'm very impressed with these three great Baltic nations and these three great presidents. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. The President of the United States and the leaders of uh, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia walking out of the East Room following a joint news conference. Uh, there was news on several fronts, including the President doubling down on what he said earlier in the day, that he wants to deploy U.S. military troops to the border, the U.S. Uh, border with Mexico. The President also doubling down on Syria, uh, once again suggesting uh, he wants all U.S. troops out of Syria, out of that region, in fact, as quickly as possible. He says the $7 trillion that that the United States has spent in the Middle East uh, over these past 17 years. He says we have nothing for that except death and destruction. It's time to get out. Uh, the president also saying he wants to have a good relationship with Russian President Putin, uh, but he's going to find out fairly soon whether or not that's going to happen. Hi, everybody. Just a quick reminder, Mox News survives solely on your tips and contributions. It's easy to make a contribution or a tip or leave a tip at moxnews.com, or there are clickable links in the text body of this video. It should take the average person, most people, probably less than two minutes. Thanks very much for your time and your continued support. Stay cool one of these days. This war is going to end. Till that day.